Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we are taking a look at AWS Virtual Private Cloud, also known as VPC, and this is a logically isolated virtual network. So AWS VPC resembles a traditional network that you'd operate in your own data center, um, but uh, a lot more uh, easily done than I would say than a real data center as you're not managing all that uh, hardware and infrastructure underneath. And some things are simplified or abstracted away to make your life a lot easier. This is a, a diagram I created to represent a very simple VPC. I wanna point out that these diagrams can get very complex because there's a lot of components that go into VPC depending on what you wanna do. And you might only have room to represent certain things. So just understand that you're gonna see a lot of variations here where some things are omitted because they're assumed and other times uh, they're adding more detail for specific reasons. So the VPC in here uh, has, again, lots of different components, but generally when you're using VPC, uh, the two main reasons why is that you're launching a virtual machine because that is the lowest kind of compute that you're going to get here. So here it's represented here as an EC2 instance um, or a virtual network card, which are often attached to um, a compute such as EC2. And so they're not always represented, I would say, in, um, in these diagrams, but uh, those are uh, network cards are very important because even if you're not using compute, you might need a network card to bridge some kind of other compute over into your VPC, whether that's Lambda or uh, ECS or any of these other managed compute services or something like RDS. Um, but generally it's for EC2 instances, but we'll get all into those components here shortly. Um, AWS VPC is tightly coupled with EC2. So all VPC CLI commands are under the AWS EC2. So just understand why that is because you know you can't separate VPC from EC2 even though they're treated in the console as two separate things, okay?